seems like a very good place to start. You grew up in Brooklyn from a family, okay, let's hear it for Brooklyn. <laughs> a family that was not devout, but very identified. You have described your mother, your beloved mother lighting candles on Friday nights. And I heard how, I've heard how you've enjoyed celebrating Passover with your family. You've remarked that the four questions was the best part of the Seder. I'm wondering why. A child, the youngest child, is asking about this evening in this celebration, why is Passover night different from all other nights? It's a child asking a question, and the rest of the, uh, the Seder is devoted to answering that mm -hmm. child's question. I think it's just one of many illustrations of how Jews, Jews are learning and want children to be well educated. A, a couple of years ago with Rabbi Holtzblatt, you wrote about the heroic and visionary women in the Passover story. And I'm just wondering, did you notice all that when you were a girl? Or is that the kind of thing that emerged later in life for you? this recognition of the role of women in this well, story. Lauren was the prime mover in this venture. I think growing up, I might have known about Miriam and Moses' mother, but I didn't know about the midwives, and I, didn't, well, I knew about the Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's daughter, but the Passover Seder, the Haggadah, uh, there were no women in it. That's true. And so you've worked to make a difference in that regard. Um, and, I th and I understand that that was something that you were aware of as a girl as well, your limitations. The boys were having bar mitzvahs, and girls could not. Uh, and your mother had very strict orthodox upbringing. And I'm just wondering how that experience of being a girl uh, at a time when girls and women had very little or no role in religious life. How did that affect you? Did it inspire you, or, or, or was it something that you wanted to change? Of course I wanted to change it. I wanted to have a big party for Mitzvah <laughs> and get all those presents. That I grew up with a, a cousin. We lived in the same household. Two sisters married, two brothers. We were three months apart. We were like twins, and he was bar mitzvah, and had this great party and all the gifts. I was very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, later on in life, um, I've read that you traced the Jewish presence on the Supreme Court, beginning not with Justice Louis Brandeis, the first justice, but actually with Judah Benjamin, who was the first Jew to be offered a seat yeah. in the United States Supreme Court, but who declined. And in fact, he became a leader of the Confederacy. And I'm wondering, why do you start there in thinking about the Jewish presence?